now it's dark. The first point maybe is um, we have a table back there and everyone who comes asks, how do you pronounce this? So now for, <laughs> for the world, it's Mono Ruyo, which is the Esperanto pronunciation. But since we're all pirates, we can call it whatever we want. So this talk is about where are we, what's going on, as we heard, <clears throat> what's the state of affairs right now. So right now we just released a new, a new version with pocket change, which I'll be talking more about later. Uh, we are regrouping a bit in the sense that we are figuring out how do we want to continue, in what form do we want to continue, and I'm not talking about as a team, but uh, the direction of the app, design choices, do we want to support new, the new material design immediately, stuff like that. <clears throat> it's been over a year without a major release, which is basically the reason why talk is called, uh, where are we going? How are we going? The reason is that uh, there are only three of us, so the two designers, uh, Andres we saw earlier this morning, <clears throat> and uh, me as a developer. That's the one bottleneck, of course, that there are only three of us. And the other thing is that in the past year, <clears throat> we, all three of us, have had um, challenges at work, at home, and so it's been a slow year. The future plans, when? Soon, as usual. Um, some things sooner than others. We'll see, we'll see the roadmap later. Um, we are energized again to put in more power into this, uh, into this project. And it's been great today and, and yesterday to, to get so much positive feedback and uh, the feedback which is not as positive is also positive for us because we can totally totally use it which is which is fantastic thank you and please come to us if uh, there's anything you want to say <clears throat> funding funding is a big topic of course we don't care so much for money but we still like it um yeah over a year ago end of 21, we decided to go away from the CCS for some reasons which I'll maybe talk about later uh, and do our own decentralized funding thing. It's on fundingmonoruyo.app where you can uh, see what projects are in the pipeline. So basically the major, major steps. We do all kinds of updates and UI updates and stuff like that for free, so to say. <clears throat> but the big things are, are there, and it's interesting because we have a sub-address for each, for each project, and people can vote with the Monero what should be done next, and when it's funded, like, just like the CCS, we start, we start doing it. <clears throat> the roadmap. I don't know how real it is, we'll see, but <laughs> as of today, <laughs> we think this is the roadmap. Uh, pocket change, which has been done for 100%, is something which was funded a year ago, and finally we found the time and uh, design choices and implementation of how to do it. What's pocket change about? Pocket change allows us to spend continually. So basically here I can drink a beer every two minutes forever, which was not possible the last time I was here. I had to wait 20 minutes per beer, and that was... Uh, how it works uh, is part of the presentation. We deployed it a couple of weeks ago on the Alpha channel, and it's been working well. And beginning of this week, <clears throat> we put it up on the on the main main sources of, of the app, and it seems to work. So I've had a lot of beer, not today. Um, the other thing which is funded is uh, an iOS proof of concept, which is half done. So it's basically a re-implementation of Munoruyo in, in Dart and Flutter, so we can use the same code base for 
iOS and for Android, which is a bit difficult. It's a lot of work. And this is only a proof of concept to see, OK, how, how do we deal with this? Uh, am I good enough to code it? What libraries do we need? The whole infrastructure. So a big part of it was, of course, getting iOS devices and figuring out how they work. Uh, the last time I touched a Mac was 1990. No, that's wrong. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Seven. So yeah, and a lot has changed. They're still sexy though. So yeah. <clears throat> so that's what this is about. And when we, we finish this, we can we can see how we how we continue. I know a lot of people are waiting for it. And uh, yeah, it, it might happen. <clears throat> Sidekick. Sidekick uh, is a fantastic project. It's a fantastic idea. It's about using another, a second Android phone, <coughs> or maybe um, a second Android phone, which runs a special version of Monoruyo in sidekick mode. And it enables you to sign transactions just like you would with a with the Ledger Nano X over Bluetooth, for example. So it also implements the same Ledger interface. So you could use this device on your on any other, um, if the Monero implementation is, is, is fixed, uh, not fixed, but in, enhanced to use this, this way over, over Bluetooth. So you can use it from the normal uh, Monero UI or from the official UI or from any other wallet which, um, which can use the Ledger protocol. So that's, that's quite nice. So basically you have some old hardware standing around and you can use that for a wallet with the advantage, of course, that you don't need to buy a ledger. Not that ledger is a bad thing, uh, but um, no one knows that you're actually using it. If you buy a ledger, you're, you're, you're somewhere. And as we all know, lists get leaked of customers of certain companies. Um, and here you're using just stock hardware for, for such a function. Yeah, this is also 50% done. <clears throat> um, the reason for that is we tried it out first if it would really work, which we weren't sure about. It does work. Well, then we, we created a CCS funding for this some years ago. And it just took forever to go through this process of whatever at the time was a weird process. Does it really get into the CCS? Will it go up for funding or not? And um, Two things happened. One thing was our time window of having free time left, so that's why it's still not finished. And the other thing is that we decided, okay, the CCS is just not flexible enough and the community um, funding process was completely untransparent and we decided to go our own way. So this is also the reason why we went to do the funding thing ourselves, which is working really well. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, everyone who, who pays for, for one of those projects on that side gets a free NFT, right? So designed and drawn by, by Andres himself in a style which is part of the project, which is really beautiful. <clears throat> what else is in the pipeline? We've been thinking about merchants a lot in the past months and year, year and a half, how do we enable merchants to be, to use Monero easier? What is the standard use case of a merchant? We saw how they use it here. Um, I don't know what's behind it. It seems to work okay. Outside, uh, it stopped working, so they said we're not taking it anymore, just, just cash or credit, the usual. Uh, what we want to do is we make, want to make a, or at least ideate for now, how can we enable merchants to use Monero better? And uh, what kind of merchants is it for? And Monero you itself as a wallet is a wallet for the streets. And if it's a wallet for the streets, you want to buy stuff with it. So we're thinking about the other, the other half of this equation. <clears throat> we have uh, an exchange service, which is at the 
uh, right now is SideShift, which works most of the time. Some people are not happy with it because of KYC stuff, no, no Tor uh, possibilities, and maybe a couple of other things, maybe long, long um, waits to get your Bitcoin. And so we, we are reevaluating how and what to do, probably in the direction of um, supporting multiple providers so you can, you can choose whatever you like. If you like to use SideShift, use SideShift. I like it. Um, you can go cheap, you can go stable, you can do whatever you want. So we are selecting, we're checking out the APIs. So there'll be a couple of uh, options to have. And another thing, of course, is a lot of people say, yeah, but I want to get Monero from somewhere else, from Bitcoin. So in the direction of incoming exchanges, like, like others do have, um, is also something we want to do. We want to do it in such a way that it fits to the rest of the app, of course, it's to the ethos of the app and that the usability doesn't get even worse than it is today. Although I like the usability, so. Um, <clears throat> so we want to add black market rates for crappy currencies like rubles and pesos from Argentina and, and stuff like that where, where the real rate, even if you get it, is just not real. Uh, and there are a couple of uh, websites which provide such um, such exchange rates, and we want to add add that in parallel to the official rates we have today. The rates are calculated are calculated are taken from the European Central Bank and from Kraken. I think we have right now to convert to I don't know. We have like thirty currencies or something, but we need more because. It's a wallet for the streets for people who need it and people in those countries need it. So it would be nice so that they know what it is in their local crappy currency. <clears throat> pocket change. I want to talk about pocket change, about what it is, how it works, and a bit about the implementation. <clears throat> Basically, when you get changed back, you know that it takes 10 blocks so that you can spend it again. So our idea is to create 10 pockets where you put a bit of change inside and just spend from these 10 pockets so that when the change from the first pocket basically comes back, uh, you can keep spending from the other pockets. And then on the 10th one, you can spend from the first one again. That's the idea. That's also the idea behind the 10. Uh, spend each block forever is the, is the slogan here. Uh, there are some voices that say it should be 16, it should be 2, it should be 13. Um, I don't quite understand, but I have not had the conversation yet um, about why, where these numbers come from. So basically, when you enable the, the pocket change function, the first time you spend to anywhere, the the wallet is, oh, all the pockets are empty, let's fill them. So it fills them up with 10, 10, um, sorry, on the next line, the, the 10 times the amount that you selected for each pocket. <coughs> and um, then when you spend an amount which is under this amount that you selected, it only uses the amount from this pocket. So that's, that's the idea. So you can set it to 0 0.1 and you can have your beers forever. Or if you want to like buy more expensive beer, you set it to 1.3. Why these numbers? Because Fibonacci is cool, I guess. Um, yeah, so basically the first time you, you fill up all the pockets and afterwards you don't. So um, you'll be just filling up pockets which are empty. Of course, you can go up and buy an expensive beer and then it would probably use uh, outputs from three of these pockets. So the next time you spend, it would fill up these three pockets, so it, it goes up and down depending on your spending habits. How to document and explain this to, to normal people, we, we still have to figure out. And your input is, of, of course, uh, very, very important and welcome. We enable this per account. So Monorio supports accounts for the wallet, so you can have a, like a pocket change account for everyday stuff, or Monerocon, for example. <clears throat> And the other accounts are just normal accounts without this pocket change feature. Of course, you can turn it on and off at any time. So you go to the conference, you turn it on, 
you leave the conference, you turn it off, and, and this doesn't happen, because in the end you have um, increased fees because you, you're always having more, more transfers than just transfer and change. But you have transfer, transfer to a pocket, and the change, so the fees are a bit higher. Yeah, this is keeping pockets full. We want to make sure, as far as there's still, of course, balance in your account, that um, the pockets are full. So again, so pockets are sub addresses. That's the implementation part. <coughs> so basically, we pick the first ten sub addresses as the pockets. Interestingly enough, when we do this and we use these for pockets, uh, the Monero API sort of ignores that, so you don't actually see the incoming uh, transactions into those sub-addresses, which is good for us because then we can ignore everything else and you can use those sub-addresses for your own purposes the way you would anyway. And in the background, we use these sub-addresses as the pockets. Uh, the reason for that is when you spend, you can select from which sub-addresses the, the coins should come from. You can't select the coins in Monero, at least in the wallet API. You have to say from which sub-addresses they come. So we have these pockets and we have some code which figures out which pockets um, has, uh, has coins that we can use and then we tell, tell, the, uh, tell Monero to use exactly those sub-addresses so that we can fulfill the spend request. <clears throat> the coins interface is stolen from Wonero. Thank you, Wonero. Um, so that's something I saw one year ago that they, that, that they have this. It's very simple code and very useful code which we, which we added. And uh, maybe it's something we'll add to the Monero code base as well because you can actually see which coins you have and where they are. And it's, without this, this would be very, very difficult, or you just have to be guessing if sub addresses have something in them or not. Um, yeah, this is how it is. There are discussions and, and voices about it should be different. Yeah, we can make it different. Let's talk about how to make it different and, and for what purpose. Right now, it's 10 pockets with a selected amount. Maybe we'll add a feature to add. A selectable amount of pockets, I'm not sure if that's an advantage for a user or not. Uh, we're open to discussions of, of, any, of any kind, of course, but for now this is how it is. It works. The feedback we've received, especially here because, you know, beer um, is, positive, is positive on this. The headaches, the, our current headaches are not a lot, except yeah, but the cake interface is nicer. Okay, this is not a headache. This is just a fact of life. Is our Orbit integration. The Orbit integration works, even works well, if you know how to use it, which is the pain point, and we need to do some sort of uh, education in this direction, on the one hand. And on the ha other hand, we should enable... Um, a possibility not to use Orbot, but to use your own proxy of whatever kind you like, be it Tor, be it uh, invisible with I2P or whatever. So for the power users to have the possibility to do whatever they want and for the not power users to touch the button with an appropriate, maybe finally we can, we can make up a YouTube tutorial, which we don't have at all till now, or maybe one of you can add one of how to use this properly. Yeah, but we should rework that and figure out how to make it usable because Tor is a big, big thing for a lot of you and we want it to work. Um, maybe just to add here, we start Orbot. That was a lot of work integrating Orbot. Why don't we have it in the app? The uh, Tor itself is because uh, it's a security thing and I don't think that we're capable to stay up to date with all fixes that may happen there. So Orbot should do the heavy lifting for being secure in a network and we'll do the heavy lifting for being a fantastic uh, Monero wallet. The downside is the Orbot API does not allow you to shut down Orbot. 
So when we start our bot in the app, we can't shut it down so it continues running in the background. Um, there are also different opinions on that, if it should shut down or not, because maybe using our bot then for something else, and we can't, shouldn't shut it down because then you go into clear net and, and bad things may happen. So there's something we need to think about. The corrupt cache problem, maybe you've seen it very rarely. I think I've seen it once now in all, all Monoruyo time, is that uh, you start the wallet and it tells you something like bad username, password, which has nothing to do with the username, password, but the cache file, which is on the phone, is, is just broken. <clears throat> I've tried to debug that, uh, but basically it's just not readable. So it's broken, there's some concurrency issues. We fixed that a, a year ago or so uh, with, uh, to make sure that we don't write the file at the same time. There was some, some bug, I guess, there. And um, it still happens very, very rarely. So, but why? That's a, that's a real headache because you lose your transaction nodes, you lose your sub address names, stuff like that. So uh, you should be making backups which is not on the slides, that's another pain point we have because the backups are encrypted with the crazy pass, which is a super secure password that uh, where it's not very clear that people should write it down, although it's on the secrets page. And with that uh, crazy pass, you can actually use the backup even on a normal Monero, uh, Monero client, the official GUI, the official uh, command line client, you can use that, those files there and you can restore from that on a new phone with the crazy pass, or you can restore from that on the same phone with your normal password. Yeah, I think that's it, thank you.